how can we use Crosspoint to manage infrastructure and services and applications and specifically Kubernetes clusters if a Kubernetes cluster is required to run the Crossplane in the first place. Who or what will create a cluster where Crossplane is running? Should we use other tools like Terraform, Pulumi, Ansible or whichever tool you prefer or you preferred? before Crossplane? Or should we just create a cluster using console from our favorite cloud provider, AWS, Google, Azure, or whatever you are using? The answer to that question can be yes to all those suggestions, but there is a potentially better way how we can create a cluster where Crossplane will be running. As a matter of fact, we can use Crossplane to create a cluster where Crossplane will be running as long as we can spin up easily a temporary Kubernetes cluster that we'll use to bootstrap everything. So this video is about solving the chicken and egg problem. It is about creating a Kubernetes cluster where Crossplane will be running without using infrastructure as code type of tools because after all Crossplane is supposed to replace those tools and so much more but we'll get to that later. My name is Victor, I work for Upbound with a company behind your favorite DevOps tool and you can guess which tool it is. So here's what we are going to do. I will create a temporary Kubernetes cluster. That will be a Kubernetes cluster running locally on my laptop. I will use Rancher Desktop, but whatever I show you can equally apply to Minikube or Kind or Docker Desktop or whichever other Kubernetes cluster you prefer to use temporarily. Then I will install Crossplane in that temporary cluster. I will use Crossplane to create a new permanent cluster where Crossplane will ultimately be running. And then we're going to transfer the information about that new cluster to the new cluster. And from there on, the new cluster, the permanent cluster where Crossplane is running will be managing itself. So we'll have a permanent cluster where Crossplane will be running and it will be managing all our infrastructure and services and applications. And among other things, it will be managing itself. So we will have Crossplane that manages Crossplane. But now let's go back to the beginning. I already have a temporary cluster. I'm using Rancher Desktop and I already installed Crossplane inside of the local cluster I have on my laptop. Those are the only things I did in advance. And if you want to follow along, there is a link to the gist with all the commands. So let's get going. Let's use a temporary cluster to create a permanent cluster with Crossplane running inside of that cluster and managing itself. So this is my temporary cluster. If I list, let's say, uh, nodes, you can see that this is a Rancher desktop cluster, or you will see, there we go. Uh, it's a Rancher desktop cluster, but I already have Crossplane installed. So let's see, kubectl get ns. You can see that there is Crossplane system namespace with Crossplane up and running. Those are the only things that I did in advance. And let's see what I should do next. To begin with, I should create a new cluster. I will be using Azure today, but the rules and the logic apply equally no matter which provider you're using for your Kubernetes cluster. Actually, there are some differences between providers, very important ones, but I will talk about them later. So let's go through the demo first, and then I will tell you what you might need to do different depending on the provider you're using. So let's take a look at this file, crossplane config and config, there we are, and then config KTS. So this is my configuration file that contains all the different variations of Kubernetes clusters that I might want to create and manage. I will not go into crossplane configurations and packaging in this video. If you're not familiar with configurations, you should check out the video and the link is in the description. So go and check it out if this does not look familiar. What matters within the context of this video is that this configuration contains all the information about different compositions I can use to create different clusters. And among those, there is a definition how to create an AKS cluster in Azure, and that's what I need. So let me apply this uh, manifest, kubectl, apply, and then file name is crossplane config and config KTS. There we are. So soon I will have everything I need running to create clusters anywhere, but in this case, in Azure. So let's take a look at the definition of an AKS cluster. Uh, where is it? Azure. Here we are. Remember, I'm using compositions, so I do not have all the resources here. I have only the custom resource definition called cluster claim that defines only a few parameters. Doesn't really matter. Details are not important. You can define Kubernetes cluster any way you like. What matters is that we need to have a permanent Kubernetes cluster and we're going to create a cluster from Crossplane. And we're going to do that by executing kubectl dash dash namespace. Let's say that I'm a member of the A team. 
and I will apply whatever is defined in examples Azure AKS. There we are. I should have a cluster within, I don't know, 10 minutes or something like that. I think that's how much it takes for uh, Azure to create a cluster. So I might fast forward to the end of this process. Okay, I'm back. I had my coffee and now I'm going to check out whether the cluster was created. And if it was, I can continue with the process. As you will see, it's a simple process in most cases. So let's get going. Let's continue where I left. So kubectl get managed will give me the information about the statuses of the resources. Now you see this line at the top It's there because I overloaded my system with uh, many providers. I have AWS provider an Azure provider and Google provider and SEO provider and having multiple providers with many resources, I'm talking about hundreds or even thousands of resources can overload your Kubernetes cluster, but do not worry because that will be fixed soon. We made a patch to Kubernetes itself that will prevent this message from appearing, but that would be a subject of new video. What matters for now is that this message is unrelated with the subject and it will disappear very, very soon. And now comes the important part. I will shut down the temporary cluster I have on my laptop. It served its purpose. I do not need it anymore. It created a cluster that will be a permanent home for Crossplane and that will manage itself very, very soon. Since I'm using Rancher Desktop, I will shut it down by opening the preferences. Here we are. And what should I do? Where, how do I shut it down? Actually, I will not shut it down. I will do factory reset. Here, here we go. I will destroy everything in that cluster and that's about it now the important thing is that you should not delete the resources because if you delete those kubernetes resources those that you see here on the screen that would result in crossplane deleting the associated real resources deleting the cluster so you need to shut down the cluster without deleting the resources that's the important part otherwise crossplane would think that you want to delete the cluster and that's not what we want to do Next, I will retrieve kubeconfig, in my case from Azure, because that's what I'm using today. But it shouldn't matter because you can retrieve kubeconfig from any Kubernetes cluster. Basically, they're all giving you that option. So I will start by declaring the variable kubeconfig. And I will say that it should be in the current directory. And it should be kubeconfig.yaml. There we are. And now I will go to Azure to get the config itself. There we are. Where is my cluster? Here we are. There is my cluster. And uh, what should I do? I think it's here. Yes, connect. And I will copy those commands to get my cube config. Here we are, the first one. And then just copy and paste. There we go. And then in the second one, which is this one. And I will copy and paste that one as well. Here we are. I should get, there we are. I will overwrite it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Okay, there we are. That's my cube config. I can access my cluster. So the next thing I need to do in this permanent cluster, I repeat, this is a permanent cluster, a permanent home for crossplane that we created from a temporary cluster running locally. So what should I do? I will create a couple of namespaces. Kubectl create namespace crossplane system. And uh, I will create a team. That's the namespace of my team. And there we are. So I will repeat the same commands that I used to install and configure and do whatever I need to do in the temporary cluster. And that's to create a secret. Here we are, there's the secret. I will install Crossplane through Helm in this case. And I will install Azure Provider once this is finished. This will take a couple of moments. Come on, come on, come on. There we are, and I will install the provider, Azure provider, because that's the one that matters here, even though package that I will install soon will bring me that provider, but I need it anyways. And I will install the config, the provider config, that will provide the authentication that I need to my Azure account. Then we have config that I uh, executed applied earlier that contains all my Kubernetes clusters. And now comes the important part. I will apply this file. Look at that one. Uh, what is it? Uh, Azure AKS. There we are. So I will apply into the new cluster the same manifest that I used to create the cluster in the first place. And that is kubectl dash dash namespace a team. And I want to apply file name examples azure aks.yaml. 
there we are. Now the major difference is that this will not create any cluster and I will prove it to you because I will execute kubectl get managed. There we are. We got two definitions, one for the resource group and one for the Kubernetes cluster. Now what is important here is that those are already ready and synced. And there is no way that Azure would create a new cluster so fast. What actually happened is that the crossplane running in the new cluster, in the permanent cluster, was fed the information, the manifest about that cluster, and it went to Azure and asked, hey, do you already have a cluster with that name? Azure responded with yes. Is that the same cluster as the definition that I have about the desired state of the cluster? Yes. Therefore, there is nothing for me to do. And from now on, the new cluster has crossplane running and it is managing itself. And I can prove it to you by making a change in the manifest. So I will open examples, Azure AKS, and I will change, for example, what should I change? Let's say the minimum number of nodes to five. That would be a good increase in the number of nodes. And then I will apply the manifest again. And then let's take a look at the managed resources. Get managed. Soon it will change the state of sync. Let's see whether that's happening. Actually, it already synchronized itself. So what will be even better is to do kubectl get nodes. Right now, my cluster has three nodes. That's the initial definition. But if I go and fetch another coffee or fast forward for a couple of minutes, I should see five nodes there. And that should be the proof that the cluster where Crossplane is running is managing itself. We needed that initial cluster, the temporary cluster, a local cluster, only to bootstrap the new cluster and then install Crossplane in that cluster and feed it the same manifest that was used to create the cluster in the first place. Now that I modified that manifest, I should see five nodes soon. Let me actually go to the Azure portal and see what's going on over there. Okay, and uh, I have one node pool, and let's see, let's go to that node pool, and three out of three ready. It's not yet there, but it will be, I promise you. You'll see. Actually, I can go directly to the node pool, and let's take a look here. Yeah, yeah, look at this. Look at this guy, it says five nodes five nodes, three of them are ready because Azure did not yet create additional nodes, but what it has as the information is that it should have five nodes. So soon those five nodes will be the actual number of nodes, which in this case is still three. So let's fast forward a minute or two. And now there are four nodes, so you see, it is increasing the number of nodes, the update works, uh, it will soon have five nodes. There we go five out of five nodes are ready. And that should be the proof that crossplane running in that cluster is managing itself. Now there is one very important thing to understand and I will be able to describe the thing by describing uh, the, the resources itself. So that's kubectl describe uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, A-team AKS. Here we go. Let me show you that important thing. I just need to find it first. Here we are. Look at the notations. It says Crossplane IO external name A team AKS. I did not define that annotation myself. So when Crossplane created the cluster, it created the cluster with certain properties, among other things, it created a cluster with the name A team AKS. All that was happening in a temporary local cluster. When I moved, when I applied that same definition, the new cluster, Crossplane went to Azure and asked, hey, do you have already a resource, a real resource, in this case cluster, called like this, with the same name as the external name? Azure said yes, and that meant that there was nothing for Crossplane to do except to take over the management of that cluster from there on. I did not have to do anything to make that happen because that external name happens to be the same name as I gave to the cluster. But this will not work always because in some cases providers do not allow us to give a name to the resource. A good example could be, let's say, VPCs in AWS. You cannot give a name to a VPC. And that means that Crossplane would create a VPC, it could not give it a name, AWS would give it a random name, and then Crossplane would put that name into this annotation. And that means that if you would like to repeat the same process, you would need to discover what is the external name that was assigned 
to resource and add that annotation to your manifest before you move it to a permanent location before you apply it in the newly created cluster. In other words, the annotation of the external name needs to match the name of the resource in whichever provider you're having that resource. In most cases, it is the same as the name you give to the resource. Like in this case, I did not have to do anything, but if the names are randomized, if they're assigned by the provider themselves, then you would need to discover that name by describing the resource and then add this line with whatever value is there to the manifest and then apply it again in the permanent cluster. So please, please, please make sure that the external name annotation always matches the real name, which is not a problem when Crosslink can name the resource, like in case of Azure, but it could be a problem in specific cases, again, like VPC for AWS, that gets the name auto-assigned. And that's only a problem if you try to move that manifest, to apply that manifest in a different instance of Crosslink, because Crosslink internally knows all those things, but the new instance would not know if that's not the same as the name of the resource itself. And if you're still confused, read this section of the design document. It explains how external names work and why they matter and why they do not matter depending on the circumstances and so on and so forth. And that's the solution to the chicken and egg problem. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.